Hello folks, hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. We've got another match here in this. It's going to be Fallen versus Creoria. Fallen in the green in the top left playing as the Empire. And Creoria bottom right in the blue playing as the Demons of Chaos. Both players play a little bit of a slower pace and a bit of a slower play style. So we'll see how this game ends up. Fallen, a big fan of towers in the main base. It expands a bit later. What is the army composition? What are the units he's going to go with? We shall see. I expect Grandmaster first, as always. Doctrine of Gunpowder. Okay. So Fallen, already committed to snipers. And Creoria on the other side. Don't believe he's picked his spec yet, but I expect to see it soon. Is it the Nurgle spec that he loves so much? Or is it going to be something else? Or is it going to be something else? Grandmaster now in queue for Fallen. Coinite Arena. Altar comes up. What's the spec? What's the spec, Creoria? And more importantly, what's the hero? What is the first hero? Mastermind. Okay. So Mastermind first. A little bit of a different sort of a pace for him, I suppose you could say. Usually he goes for the Blighted One or a different hero like this. Maybe the Taker of Skulls. And he might have already picked his spec, and I might have missed it, unfortunately. But we'll see once the hero's up. Oh, player's lagging a bit. That's unfortunate. Ephemeron's being finished. The Grandmaster is up and out. And able to creep on the map already. Mastermind it going to be up soon. And one Bloodletter already done. But he is supply locked, can't build the rest of them until he gets another barracks up. So I suppose the spec is done. Yes, it is. And it is the Nurgle spec for Creoria. So both going to start creeping. Fallen over here with the Night Summon. Going to creep this close green easy camp. And Creoria, I expect to do the same. Mm -mm, okay. Well, Creoria going to try and clear one of the harder camps after the map changes, and this is not going to go well. This is not going to go well. Bloodletter taking a ton of damage already. Now the hero, Mastermind, taking a ton of damage as well, and yep, he's got to get out of there. Oh, he's got to get out of there. Mastermind. Oh, the hero can't lose the hero right now. Oh my gosh. Six health left on the Mastermind. Creeping did not go well. Creeping did not go well to start out. Meanwhile, Creeping going just fine for Fallen. And that was uh, scarier than it needed to be. But the Smithy and Lumber Mill coming up now on the side of Fallen. I believe he's not able to upgrade these to the State Barracks until the Smithy is done. Not 100%, but T2 Tech has also started, so I expect... The upgrades to be on the way soon and snipers to be out and with the army eventually wow, double gauntlets of ogre strength the drops for for fallen here plus 12 damage already on the grandmaster and now doing a bit of scouting with the knight okay so comes over checks his expo So he checks his far expo, and now probably going to check Creoria's base. Creoria now with a couple more bloodletters out. And Creepy going to be just fine now that he has more units to work with. And Mace is striking the drop for him. Very nice. And yep, Fallen scouting and being scouted somewhat in return. But he's going to see most of the base composition here. He's going to see what's already up what's probably on the way and the knight gonna get out of there afterwards but not actually creeping during this time is just waiting in the base still no upgrade to state barracks oh there we go finally started caster's curse slash blessing i suppose but t2 now being started for creoria on the other side 
So what's the move now? More blood letters? Is it going to go with skull cannons? What's the play? What units is he going to introduce to the rest of the army? Because we know that snipers are on the way for Fallen. In short order. And he's also got upgrades for those snipers on the way as well. In the smithy, upgrades for the knights are on the way. Okay, so first, Ephemeron committed to stable. I expect these to be skull cannons indeed. And also building a ziggurat in the main. So one tower to protect, him, protect himself. I guess he was worried a bit after seeing that knight come in and scout. The creeping's still going relatively well. For Fallen here, gonna get a Mace of Striking as well. So plus 18 damage now on the Grandmaster. And Creoria coming over, positioning to start clearing his expansion. And is he going to commit to do so? Upgrade. Does not look like it. Looks like he's second-guessing it. Just waiting. Meanwhile, Fallen coming over, taking away one of the close, easy green camps from Creoria. And should not quite be level 3 after this. Yep, 2.9, not quite level 3. Slanishi Sphere now up. Creoria no longer pop capped or supply locked. And another crystal being prepared as well. And this worker, this looks like a tower. And Fallen, waiting. Going to start on another creep camp. Looks like he's doing some macro in the main. And now that it's nighttime, he sent these over to attack, but they were still asleep, so. Wakes him up. More snipers, though. And a workshop being built in the main. Okay. So, workshop started. Still hasn't cleared his expo. But level 3 now on the Grandmaster secured. And another Mace of Striking. Wow, plus 24 damage on the on the Grandmaster. That's quite nice. And, oh, first Skull Cannons are up for Creoria. Detected T2 is done. Infernal Castle. Zinch Crystal no longer supply locked again. I expect more Skull Cannons to be joining us. But is there going to be a second hero for Fallen for any time? Anytime soon. Workshop being finished now. He's got three towers already in the main. But Creoria should be creeping. He really should be. Demonic arm rate. Building yet another tower in the main base. Boots of Kelthalos. Here the drop for the Grand Master on the side of Fallen. I expect him to sell one of the gauntlets and pick that up. Just get extra armor. And he's going to sell them, isn't he? Yep. Okay. Doesn't feel the same way about armor and agility. He's going to sell them instead. But Creoria finally coming over. Does lose one blood letter to creeps. But he's clearing his expo. And that's really what matters. The Ring of Regeneration for his troubles. And wow, just like that. Fallen going into upkeep already. And it is for mortars. Okay. So he's going into upkeep. He's going to clear his own expansion finally. And mortars are on the way for him. So both players actually have Siege in the army quite early on. Ring of Regen. Wow, that's very nice for the Grandmaster, especially with how low he is. Level 4 secured. And I say that he did sell the Boots of Kelpos, so he'll probably sell this ring as well. Expo now going to be started, I expect, for Creoria once he has the resources to build the gold mine. I hope. I really hope so. Come on. Come on. Okay, well. Creoria still just hanging out. Expo now queued. 
for Fallen. He did sell the ring of regeneration, of course. Why would you need that? Comes back over, picks up his TP scroll, and still the gold mine is not being prepared by Creoria. There we go. There we go. Okay. Gold mine started now and being rushed. Not truly rushed. No sack, but at least it's being blitzed. I don't know. Not a, I can't say rushed because he didn't sack, but yeah. There's also an option to... Uh, to rush the building process about halfway. So it's being expedited, I suppose you could say. And upgrades for the mortars on the way. Cluster fragmentation rounds and blighted one, second hero gonna be coming up for Creoria. So expo for both, second hero first for Creoria. More and more items here for the Grandmaster to ultimately sell. Because it seems like there's no second hero going to be on the way anytime soon. But fragmentation rounds slash shards have been completed. And T3 tech was started a while ago. T3 now just starting for Creoria. Well, I said there was no hero. But finally the captain's coming. So second hero now started for Fallen. Quite late. And cannon towers being built, five towers on the main. Goodness gracious. And more upgrades for the knights. All of which have been defensive. But more and more creeping, and this might be level five on the Grandmaster. Is it just short? It is just short. 4.9 on the Grandmaster. Ring of the Arc Magi. Please don't sell that. Doesn't even pick it up. Ring of Arc Magi on the ground. A worker heading over. He's going to repair a mortar. Does the captain come up and pick up the ring? Fallen, please don't forget about it. Oh, he, okay. He's going to leave it behind. So ring of the arched magi on the ground. Blighted one up for Creoria. Items are still relatively good. I would expect him to pass the Mark of Nurgle as well as maybe the Ring of Regeneration over to the Blighted One. But we shall see. But Creeping finally going to start once again for Creoria. And meanwhile, Fallen sending over workers to finish. He wasn't power building the expo this entire time, but he's going to finish the expo with a power build and be mining. So I guess I mean, he could have been mining for minutes now, but... Well... It works out all the same, I suppose. Tech to T3 did finish, though. And he's got a knightly order barracks. Is this going to be upgraded? Is he going war priests? And Creoria still just creeping. And oh my goodness. This whole time. This whole time the expo is not mining. This whole time the expo is not mining. I suppose you a supply lock for a bit there. But this expo needs to start mining. It does. Creeping going relatively well, although most of the blood letters were lost. Level 2 and level 3, respectively, on the Mastermind. Well, on the Blighted One and the Mastermind in that order. Rub with the Magi the drop. And big health pot for the Blighted One is nice. Gauntlet of Ogre Strength as well. And just towers here in the expo for Fallen. Fallen actually wrapping around now on Creoria's side of the map. Going to spot that the uh, close expo spot hasn't been cleared. And he's going to clear it himself, get level 5 on the Grandmaster. Your building is complete. Yep, just like chat says, expo for Creoria. Now just mining with one unit, one worker. And Fallen looking like he's going to wrap around and put some pressure on the main base. And he has the units to do so. Does spot this camp not cleared yet? Heading back? What's the move? Is what is the move? Good. Double Knightly Order Barracks. Actually, the second one being upgraded to Sigmar Barracks now. Creoria. Not quite creeping. Just hanging around and Fallen. Wrapping back. 
Attack begins on the main base. Creoria returning shortly. First tower goes down. Knights being resummoned. The Furies are out. Damage being focused first onto one of the repeater hand gunners. Blighted one being focused on the other side. Oh, tower focus. Now onto the captain. Captain's still in front. And captain just being focused down bit by bit. Mastermind being in immediately obliterated, but captain down on the other side. The Fury's doing good damage. Skull Cannon's doing good damage. Knight's being taken down bit by bit. Grandmaster trying to figure out what to hit. Level 3. More units going down for Fallen. And yep, he's just going to TP out. But this whole time, the Mortar. The Mortar taking out the T3. Starts hitting one of the Sages. Oh, no, 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 no. He leaves the he leaves the T3 behind. Just one more shot. He leaves the T3 behind. It just has one more shot of health from the Mortar, and it's gone. Is that the mistake? Is that the mistake that somehow costs Fallen this game? When he's so far ahead. He lost plenty of units. Supply-wise, it looks like Creoria is in front. But that can be very deceptive. It's just Skull Cannons and Sages. The base is fortified. And production. Steady and quick. On the side of Fallen. Creeping. Starting up again. For Creoria. Kite Shield for his troubles. What's the move? Back into upkeep. Fallen goes with another knight. Yet more upgrades on the way. There should be 3-3 three, three upgrades for the ranged units. 0-3 upgrades for the knights. Captain being rebuilt, retrained. More towers on the way. And oh. Research for steam tanks being started. So steam tanks are on the way. Steam tanks are on the way eventually. And some scouting from Creoria with a blood letter. Does not want to get caught outside of his base while trying to creep because he has no TP this time. Mastermind still not being retrained or with the army. Four now on the blighted one. Boots of Kelp loss picked up. And the scouting from the blighted or from the blighted from the blood letter is gonna spot Fallen still in his main base. Oops. Hopefully that wasn't audible. <laughs> Doesn't really matter that much, but what do we got going on? What is Creoria's plan? Steam tanks in the queue. Mastermind now being retrained. Okay. So Mastermind being retrained for Creoria. Going to join this army. And I suppose this is going to be what's sent to attack. And I don't know how successful that is going to be against steam tanks. Research complete. More towers on the way. Looks like they're in the expo. So Creoria opting to uh, fortify his expo just a bit. Meanwhile, on the other side, Fallen creeping with the captain once again. Unfortunately, he brought the Grand Master, and he's really stealing away a lot of XP that could be going over to the captain. But okay. He's going to skip this camp, go straight into... Oh, no, doesn't skip this camp. I would really like him to just pull the Grand Master. Grand Master is not needed at this point to clear this camp or any of these camps. And he could get level 4 potentially on the captain, but not doing so. Creoria not able to do any creeping of his own. Most of the camps now at this point have been taken away. And 
And well, it was delayed, but this should be level 3 at least for the captain. And there it is. What are the items for his troubles? Unfortunately, things like uh, this Ring of the Magi would have been very helpful, but they're still on the ground. Pendant of Mana, not really uh, very helpful for him, I've got to say. But the first Steam Tank comes up for Fallen. And Mortar still in the back of the base. Interesting. Okay. And Creoria moving his units around the Circle of Chaos. This looks like a teleport. Great unclean one built now. So unclean one up. Unit surrounding the circle. And I expect him to be teleporting. These skull cannons are not going to get teleported. You can't teleport mechanical units because they don't have... Uh, well, yeah, you just can't, can't do it. Okay, so it missed one sage. But yep, there they go. Most of the army teleported across the map trying to be sneaky, but the skull cannons weren't sent as well as one sage, and they're just going to have to walk their way over there. And, well, that could be the mistake that costs Creoria. But Fallen is ready. He's just here waiting in his base. Completely fortified. The flank being covered by one mortar. Steam tanks and the rest of the army here on the other side defending the southwest. And more and more units coming up. So Fallen, huge supply lead at this point. Creoria spotted as the attack begins. Skull Cannon's attacking from the south. One sniper sent to greet them. Fallen splitting his army just a bit, but now committing to the Skull Cannons in the south. Meanwhile, the army in the east from Creoria, the main force, starting its attack on some of those snipers. But these Skull Cannons are going down shortly. And this is a lot of XP being given over to the captain, but more importantly, this is all the siege damage just like that. So, a few snipers go down. But there are no skull cannons. Can't deal with the steam tanks. Can't deal with the buildings. There's towers everywhere. It's up to the great unclean one to literally do everything. The only unit in this army with siege damage at all. And the Nurglin nest in the back doing absolutely nothing. Great Unclean One being focused. Why did one going to be focused as well? Not much going down on the side of Fallen. Level 6 in the Grandmaster. And, oh, Mastermind immediately getting shredded through as well. And just like that, the whole army is gone for, for Creoria. And hardly any losses on the side of Fallen. Oh, it looks tough. Can't fight with this split army. The Skull Cannons can't defend themselves, especially against the Steam Tanks. Creoria, he had some Ephemerons set up just in case, but they are all committed to Plague Bearers. He's going to try and delay this attack, I suppose. Builds. Or. Yeah. Going to try and make some time, but it's not to be. Plague Bearers destroyed. And main base going to get demolished in short order. A couple of Grand Ephemerons come up. Going to commit them to Rot Flies. What is the plan? These Rot Flies are way too late. T3 building. Oh, it started an upgrade, but it's going to disappear. Level 5 on the Captain. The Furies are up. Some of the summoned knights are going down. And now a bit of focus on some of the snipers slash handgunners, as well as the captain. So the captain should go down. So not without any losses on the side of Fallen. But realistically, it's a price worth paying 
And as the main building is now the focus, Creoria going to find himself supply locked, and yep, there we go. GG. All right, straight into it. Game two between these two players, Fallen and Creoria. And we've got, well, actually the same race here for Fallen, but a different race here for Creoria. So Creoria, not going with the Demons of Chaos. He's going to go with Orcs instead. Fallen still here on the Empire. And this will be interesting to see. What is the change in playstyle for Creoria? What are the changes that Fallen's going to make on a bit different map? Where the bases are somewhat closer. And where the Expo is much easier to clear. We've got a forward Goblin Lodge here from Creoria. Lumber Mill coming up as well. We'll see what the uh, hero is. But the uh, spec going to be the Way of the Orcs for him. Meanwhile, Fallen actually going the War Priest spec. I think he get, looked like he went Casters, maybe. So he's going Casters. But I still expect him to build the Grandmaster first. And Orc. Oh, no. Goblin Boss. Yep, Goblin Boss on the way for Creoria. Second Goblin Mod being built. And Grandmaster is queued. For Creo or for Fallen. Jeez. <laughs> Creoria starting one of his goblins, though. Okay, so this should be interesting. I expect a much faster pace in this game for Creoria, right? He's just building regular units. He's got heroes to work with early as well. So that's similar, but the production can be very steady. Versus how disjointed it can feel with the Demons of Chaos sometimes. Wow, and, uh, okay, so Fallen actually canceled, or maybe he didn't cancel his spec. I think this is its own spec, but did he go the worker spec? Did, is this not the caster spec, or is that part of the caster spec? I don't know. But this is interesting. This is interesting already. So Grandmaster comes up. It's got the Holy Relic, so it is the caster spec. And meanwhile, Way of the Orc... Battle Axe for the Goblin Boss. Creeping going to begin here. And go very nicely. No more Goblins in queue, though. And now an Orc Barracks has been started. There we go. More and more goblin peons being cute as well. Goblin boss is going to come over, pull this camp. Snotling's now out of the lodge. Meanwhile, creeping also going just fine over here for Fallen. Cleared his first camp, the ogres. Got a charm shield for his troubles. And already starting his tower in the main base. All right. He's going to bring some militiamen as well as a couple of the archers this time. So no handgunners. He's actually going to bring archers. And that should make creeping a lot faster. As long as he brings a handful of them. Second orc barracks started. First orc boys joining the fray. And the shop as well is on the way. I expect tech to start soon. But level 2 on the Grandmaster, level 2 on the Goblin Boss, almost, but not quite. Looks like one of the creeps must have gone the way of the Snotlings, and I believe that does steal away your XP, unfortunately. But is he just going to go and clear his expo straight away? What is the plan for Fallen? More and more archers joining the army. More and more militiamen joining the army as well. And he is crossing the map. Creoria started on his expo. 
I believe Tech to T2 has also been started. Yes, it has. Watchtower in the main being built. Second barracks comes up. Shop going to be finished as well. But Fallen shows up. Sees that the, uh, well, the close ogre is done. He is just going to come right in and put some pressure onto the main base of Creoria. But the expo is cleared quickly. Level 2 on the goblin boss. He's returning shortly. Some snotlings coming out of this goblin lodge here. He's just going to rebuild it. Not going to protect it. Or try to repair it. And now he comes over with the bulk of his army and applies some pressure himself. himself. So one militiaman goes down. Looks like one goblin. Two goblins. Going to be going down on the other side. Oh, and a third as well. Orc boy now being focused. Prioria has to retreat a little bit. But more snotlings could be on the way soon. Ooh, but the shop. Ooh, but the shop, but the shop, but the shop, the shop, the shop, the shop, the shop. Oh, shop's gonna go down. But the snotlings are here. The Goblin Lodge finished. Stunned there on the Grandmaster. Focus on the Orc, orc Boy. Oh, gets blocked, trapped, taken down. So both Orc Boys went down, but two more come up. And, oh, meanwhile, the stun and damage on the Grandmaster was there. And... Well, a lot of units went down on the side of Creoria, but the hero for Fallen, not saved, taken down. And he has to retreat with the bulk of his army. And all of a sudden, T2 for the Orc. Shot being rebuilt. Another watchtower on the way. And now he can build another hero. He can build some stronger units. And upgrades could be on the way as well. He's already got 1-0 upgrades for the goblins. For the orc boys. Tower finishes. Is he going to save resources for the expansion? It looks like it. Bringing over another worker. And I expect his expansion to be started. And now he's getting back on, on the map. Double gloves of haste here for the goblin boss. Not ideal in any way. Meanwhile, Fallen stuck. Has to wait for the Grandmaster to revive. Does have two state barracks here, though. Job's done. But he's getting upgrades. Teching to T2. But now, all of a sudden, he's a little bit behind, right? Hasn't cleared his expo. Expo is going to be a while away. Meanwhile, expo can be started here. On the side of Creoria. Creoria is still creeping. Circlet of Nobility. Getting closer and closer to level 4 on the Goblin Boss. And yep, expansion started now. Meanwhile, Fallen. More and more upgrades. Splitting us upgrades all over the place. The Grandmaster not here with the army. He's just going to opt to clear the expansion without him. Forgo the XP in favor of the production and resources. That means Mace is striking on the ground. Oh, is he going to destroy it? Oh, just don't destroy it. But all right. Clearly, Creoria now ahead. Worker finally coming over, going to start the expansion. Grandmaster coming back up. Would have been level 3 if he was there with the rest of the army, but was not. So he needs to pick up the Mace is striking and then rejoin the army, but the the army here for Fallen coming across the map and likely going to scout out this expo. So will Creoria be able to defend it or is it going to get cancelled? Is the expo going to get cancelled? Expo now started. No TP from Creoria. He's just walking over. Oh, does not quickly cancel the expo. Tons of resources gone now. Tons of resources just gone like that. damage now being dished out by Creoria not quite able to get one unit now focusing on one of the knights the knight summon resummon nicely done by fallen so a good cancel meanwhile his can or his uh, expo is coming up and now Creoria 
with his first black orc. Going to cross the map. Is he going to look to do the same? Does he want to cancel of his own? No, he's just going to start creeping. Expo being restarted already. And Fallen just standing in his expo. He's going to just sit there and protect it. Wow, sentry wards for Creoria. Okay, that could prove very useful. Especially late game. Shot being built in the expo as well for Creoria. But no power building going on for our boy Fallen here in the Empire. And that means, relatively speaking, these expos are close enough that it's not really a huge deal that that first expo got canceled. Army a little bit stronger on the side of Creoria. M more and more upgrades on the way for Fallen. Towers in the main being built as well. And he's got casters, it looks like. A College of Magic finally coming up. And he's going straight into White Mages. So healers are on the way. Knightly Order Barracks being built as well. But he's got these upgrades. Does this mean he wants to build steam tanks eventually? There is no workshop right now. But maybe they'll be on the way eventually. Usually you don't get upgrades for units you don't have yet, but we shall see. But the first caster is now joining the production queue. Meanwhile, more and more orc archers on the way for Creoria. And this arm or this army just getting stronger and stronger. Still not power building is fallen. Expansion's coming up at almost the same time. Towers for each. Level four on the goblin boss. Creeping beginning once again for the Grandmaster, but not close to level four at all. Leaving behind an enchanted Oh, okay, no. Goes back to grab the shield. But he is super worried about his expansion being attacked. Clearly. Job's done. Meanwhile, Fallen... I mean, Creoria. Goodness gracious, I need coffee or something. Creoria feeling the same way, though. Just standing in his main... Or his expansion. Goodness gracious. But he's got sentries up. He knows that it's either his main or nothing at all because he can see basically everywhere else. And he is going to cross the map and put a little bit of pressure on Fallen here, who has actually left his expansion to creep in the south. So is this going to be the mistake? It does get level 4 on the Grandmaster. Items on the ground. So much armor. That's like plus 11 armor that he picks up the shield. The attack here is started from Creoria. Workers stopped. Production stopped. And yeah, Fallen just going to lose his expo just like that. So he TPs back home. And leaves behind one caster. Interesting. So... Even though he was close by, he didn't want to uh, didn't want to engage. Just lets his expo fall for nothing, and loses a caster as well. And I don't know, strategically, interesting choices. Will they pay off though? Will they pay off? No second hero for either player, still, this late in the game. But we've got Witch Hunters now for Fallen. Are they going... Will they really pose any kind of problem, though? I mean, they burn mana. There's not a lot of mana on this side of Creoria. And what is the plan for Creoria? Both players are T3 now. More black works. More upgrades. 
What else? What else? There has to be something else. This army composition is not going to cut it. Oh, and there it is. Wyvern War Boss Research. And this could be the difference that is very much needed right now. Wyvern War Bosses would make a huge difference in terms of army composition, strength, if they joined this group. And Fallen, still with no second hero, it's going to be creeping once again. But what is his plan? What is his plan? First war boss in Q. Tech to T3, incredibly late. Here for Fallen. And more and more towers in the main. All kinds of <laughs> upgrades for every kind of unit he has. He's got two zero upgrades on the knights, two two upgrades on the witch hunters and the archers, and it's just all over the place. Meanwhile, upgrades for the orcs. One bald fist, damage, and a bit of armor. But most importantly, the bosses of war, riding their wyverns, will be joining the fray soon. Providing the endurance aura, the speed, and that will be a huge difference. Creeping beginning still. I should say continuing, but I'm not sure whether he's been creeping this whole time. The items don't look any different, so I don't believe so. But not going to be quite level 5 for Creoria here. Meanwhile, Fallen has a worker again. Going to restart his expansion and keep his army here to protect it. Ooh, and some very much needed armor for the goblin boss there with the enchanted shield being picked up. The war boss is here. The war boss is here, and a second one will be joining us shortly. And the Tech to T3 is still on the way. Minutes and minutes behind for Fallen. 1200 HP, endurance aura, attack speed, movement speed for the army of the orcs. And I expect Creoria to just walk over and attack now that the second war boss is done. Will it be enough? Will it be enough? Two more black orcs in production. They instantly come up. The army for Creoria here is huge and incredibly strong. A fourth damage upgrade already finished. Fallen, er, yeah, Fallen. Power building is expo finally. But the attack is on its way. The drums of war. And what I will describe as hoofbeats, despite no horses. The orcs on their war path. The buffs are there. The war boss providing the entire army with attack speed. Damage is through the roof. And the orcs are just decimating the humans. Yep. Grandmaster goes down. Very few of the green-skinned army being sent to the afterlife. And unit by unit going down. Level 6 on the goblin boss. The expo comes up just in time to be destroyed by the orcs. And is that GG? It is. It is GG. GG, Creoria taking it in game two with the orcs. The army composition, the tech to T3, way too late for Fallen. 
The expo was nice. The cancel on the expo was nice. But overall, Creoria with the much better army composition, the tech to T3 timing was good. Creeping was relatively good as well. And both players with only one hero. The difference, of course, the army composition. Okay, join us again. Here we are in game three, the decider game. This time being played on last refuge here. In the top right, Fallen in the gray, playing as the high elves. And in the bottom left, Creoria in the purple, playing as the warriors of chaos. And I'm a big fan of the Warriors of Chaos. We'll see what spec he decides to go to. Meanwhile, Fallen, though, with the High Elves likely going to go Archers or something along those lines. And fortify his base a bit. So, I'm sure we're in, uh, in, in for a longer game once again between these two. As always is the case. Unholy host of Zinch spec decided on. It's going to be the Zinch spec for Creoria here. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. What is his what is his plan? What is his plan? This means that he has essentially caster units and spells on a lot of the army. But it can take a while to actually get to the point where you have them. Meanwhile, he is supply locked, needs to build yet another hut. On the other side, Fallen canceling one of his uh, farms in favor of training the commander. So, hero started on both sides commander for Fallen and the High Elves, Arc Sorcerer of Zinch, the first unit slash hero. For Creoria. Your building is complete. So second up comes up, no longer supply locked. Fallen now gonna find himself supply locked instead until this farm finishes. And okay, immediately. Almost all of the lumber workers, all of them actually, transformed into marauders. And he's gonna try and come clear his expo. And this is interesting. This is not going to go very well. I'm just going to be honest. They're unarmored against piercing damage. And yeah, you can just see how much damage they're taking. They're just getting absolutely shredded by this bloodlust. So he will be able to clear this, but it's going to come at quite the cost. Meanwhile, first tower being started in the base for Fallen, as always. And yep, yeah, Creoria trying to cycle some of his units out, but... It's just not doing anything. Hex now. Find a land to one of the axe throwers. But he's still going to lose in the Marauder. And probably going to lose one more. Nope. Hex in time. Saves one of the last ones. Mesa striking for his troubles. But most of the woodworkers absolutely demolished. And have to be rebuilt. In both the barracks and the Grey Hall. Meanwhile, commander's up. Farms up, barracks is up, spearmen on the way, lumber mill as well, so archers will be there soon. And Fallen, his creeping, likely to go quite a bit better. Creoria with no resources now to start his expo, so he cleared it quickly. But yeah, supply locked once again until this hut finishes. We'll need to build another hut very soon. This is tough. This is tough. Forge started now. Marauders can finally join us. Once that's fun. Once that's done. Fun. Fun and done. The creeping going to start once again. But got to be careful with the marauders. Got to be careful with the marauders. The axe throwers are merciless. And one marauder almost goes down. One will. Second one going to go down in short order. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. Yes, you can turn them into so-called attack units early on. 
but realistically, they're just not that strong. They're just not that strong. So bit by bit, creeping going relatively okay after all that. Oh, gonna just sacrifice his last Marauder and... Yep, well, Horseman though. Marauder Horseman is up. So all the tribesmen dead, but now he's got Horseman on the way. Meanwhile though, Fallen clearing his own expansion with just the Commander and the Spearman. It's going quite well because of the added armor from the abilities. So this will be cleared, and workers should be headed up this way soon. Smithy now coming up. But no archers in production, no more spearmen in production for Fallen. The tech to T2 has been started for a while. And yep, there comes the high elf worker for the expo. So Creoria expo still delayed for a while. Shop is up so he can heal his hero at least, and building a second barracks. And now we've got warhounds on the way. We've got Warhounds on the way. Interesting. Okay. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if Warhounds is ideal, but... They're quick units. You can maybe use them for scouting as well, which is always good. And something that I would recommend playing as uh, Warriors of Chaos. It's, I mean, that's pretty much their best attribute, right? Just scout and maybe uh, hit the worker line. But really don't try to do too much else with them. Yep, no power building though. Here in the expo for Fallen. Means that, again, the expo timing's not going to be too, too far off. Though Creoria still with not enough resources to start his. But the archers are up now. More workers heading over. In the meantime though, expo started for Creoria. Creeping going well now with the added units that are a bit stronger than the previous uh, tribesmen. And overall, it's looking quite good after all all of the uh, early game mishaps. Fallen building a tower in his uh, expansion. Just standing here ready to defend it, just in case. But two towers in the main. Third one coming up. Uh, T2 is done. No second hero started just yet. Instead likely to be upgrades for the archers and maybe even a fast tech to t3 maybe even a fast tech to t3 while fallen though gotta be careful creoria actually coming over he's got plenty of wolves and he's gonna come over and put some pressure on the expo right away the towers are not done they're just starting and this is some good uh, good pressure buying time for his own expo to come up Wasting some of the time of Fallen here. And yeah, he's going to cancel one tower and just head back. So not a bad play. Not a bad play at all. Buys just a little bit of time. Wastes a little bit of time, a little bit of, time of Fallen. And now Fallen, he's got to keep that in mind. Oh, but the second hero. Second hero was started and came up. Ranger, I didn't even see it in production, but... Wow, a, a somewhat early second hero here for Fallen. So upgrades here for the archers are on the way. Second hero is here as well. Creeping can continue. And the expo is done. Has been done for a while. Meanwhile, it's just a bunch of, bunch of warhounds. Low health units with uh, really weak armor. I mean, this this army can get shredded through quickly on the side of Creoria, but level 3 on the Arc Sorcerer. And is going to get... What did he... Yep, reveals the Expo. It's going to say he got a Crystal Ball, reveals the Expo, sees the Ranger. So sees the second hero. Is he going to start a second hero of his own? He is going to T3. Doesn't have the resources quite yet. And he's going to be supply locked pretty quickly if he doesn't actually build another hut, but we'll see. Your building is complete. But more and more tribesmen on the way. Changing position. 
They're heading over to fill the gold mine. Meanwhile, a tower being built as well. And so, yeah, Creoria just continuing to creep. We'll lose a ton of Warhounds to this camp, unfortunately. Well, I say a ton, maybe only two or three. Two, three, four. So heavy losses, maybe even gonna lose a fifth one. Yes, he will. And Robe the Archmagi for his troubles. Well, that's something at least, but the Warhound's absolutely destroyed. And really not a worthwhile investment overall. Meanwhile, more and more archers on the side of Fallen, but he's not creeping. He's got a third tower. He's building a fourth tower. He's got a farm in this expo. But not creeping. And yep, still no second hero in production for Creoria. Tech to T3 almost done now. More and more upgrades on the way for Fallen. More and more towers on the way for Fallen in the main as well as the expo. And it's just more Warhounds. It's just more Warhounds. Probably the Arkham Magi was sold. He kept the slippers instead. Interesting choice on the side of Creoria. I mean... The Book of Secrets absolutely could have been sold if you're going to buy a consumable. And now I just don't understand where we're going. What is the plan? What is the plan? Is it all about Tier 3 for Creoria? Is that it? What is he going to build? Tech to T3 was started a while ago as well for Fallen. More and more upgrades for the archers. Towers are done. And we've got upgrades for the tribes, or for the uh, the horsemen. More horsemen joining the fray as well. And double chaos barracks being built. So it's just still all over the place. We've got some commitment to the, to the horsemen. Upgrades committed to the uh, warhounds with creature attack. And then we've got barracks coming up. Instead of uh, a cage, but then a, a cage being built as well. What on earth? What on earth? But both players' expansions producing quite well. Resources looking good. Almost double the resources on the side of Fallen, which he just expended for more and more upgrades. T3 is done. Will we see a third hero? Will we see a third hero? Creeping beginning once again for Creoria. We'll get level 3 or 4 on the Arc Sorcerer. Very nice. And now that he's got so many units, creeping not quite as scary as it used to be. Health stone for his troubles. That's also nice. And we'll go ahead and pick that up. But Fallen has been creeping. Cleared the Merc camp and going to clear another one. And with the upgrades... These units disappear quickly. Many of the same drops on the side of Fallen here. Commander, a stout, tanky boy. And is just handed a healing ward for his troubles. Wow. Very nice drops. Very nice drops. Okay, so Creoria coming over. Gonna try and start the Ogre Lord. Does have the Hex for him. So we'll be able to at least take the Ogre Lord out. Code of Cunning. Wow, amazing item drop. Gotta make space and pick it up. Drop the Book of Secrets. I'm losing more and more hounds as a result. There we go. Book of Secrets has been dropped. We need another Hex on the High Priest or either of the Throwers. Don't want to lose any more units. Don't want to lose any more units. Inner fire. Okay. Didn't lose too much more. Doesn't break the book of secrets. Doesn't pick up the tome. He is out of here. Okay.
So Fallen not creeping this entire time. Just standing in his base. But more and more upgrades for the archers. He's got caster upgrades as well. He built a uh, sanctum at some point. So he's going to have healers on the way. No third hero though. Two barracks now. Smithy pumping away upgrade after upgrade. Another farm being built as well. Even though he's not nearly supply locked. But now he can go to 100 supply if he needs to. And well, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put it past Fallen to do so, actually. So it might actually be necessary. But more and more Warhounds being uh, being produced here for Creoria. And now checking the barracks. Has to wait for T3. But we have first Chaos Ogre up. I mean, what is the plan, though? What is the plan? Another Chaos Ogre being built. Upgrade finished. Research complete. Hellstone dropped on the ground. Buys a crown of Slanish. Interesting. This provides no stats, it's just CC. I mean, you could just sell the Gloves of Haste if you wanted this. More and more huts being built. All of his resources, all of his lumber expended for research just to get the knights. Was not at all prepared to build them, and now he needs a ton of lumber just to even start building knights in the first place. Has to actually upgrade them once he builds them. It's just so disjointed. Meanwhile, Shadow Warriors with full upgrades here on the side of Fallen. And you can just build more and more. I mean, this is just going to be a massacre. Once the army's actually built for Fallen, I mean, this is just going to be a massacre. Is there a way out? Prioria opted for for Chaos Ogres instead of Dragon Ogres. So the siege damage is cute, but he's not attacking buildings with them. At least not right now. He has to build more and more woodworkers to fix his wood. Health stone, not on his hero. Opted for CC and then sold an item. So he has space, but isn't going to pick it up. Meanwhile, more and more Shadow Warriors file in out of the double barracks for Fallen. And they have tons of damage. They will get more damage with more levels on the Ranger and more levels of True Sight. I mean, this is just not ideal, right? This is just not ideal. This is going to be impossible to fight back against. But okay, the hut here, another expo being started by Creoria, but I mean, look at the damage. Look at the damage. Ridiculous. Level three on the Ranger. Second level in True Sight, I expect. True Shot, True Sight. <laughs> Doesn't pick up the Mace of Striking on the Ranger. What is that about? And, ooh, Helm of Valor. Really, really good for the Commander. Could pass over his, uh, Pass over his Reaver bow to the Ranger. But nope, Ranger gonna pick it up instead. I suppose that's also just fine. Doesn't really need the strength, but okay. Meanwhile, more Shadow Warriors. Casters now with the armor to heal them. They have Focus Fire. And it's just one, two knights with no armor upgrades. More knights. They still need to be upgraded to Zinch Knights. I mean, this is not ideal. Fallen, about to hit the pop cap. The Shadow Warriors. Meanwhile, Creoria, this mishmash army is going to get absolutely decimated in the first confrontation they actually have. And it looks like it's about to begin. He's setting his control groups. And now, looks like he will just cross the map and actually 
go to fight. A hundred pop for Fallen. Given all the time in the world, no second hero on the side of Creoria, no AoE damage, doesn't have the unit composition to deal with these archers, doesn't have towers in the main base, at least not enough to protect himself against this much damage. And straight to the expo, Fallen goes. Nope. Okay. He's wrapping around straight into the base, straight into the main base. He's going to see... And yep, it's spotted out. All of the woodworkers committed immediately to marauders, and they just disappear. It's like magic. Focus fire. Where did the marauders go? Buildings are next. Tower doing nothing. Corrupted cage now being focused. And from the north, the flank attempted. Hounds going down. Massacre. The knights absolutely doing nothing. Ogres going down as well. 3 EXP for the High Elf Army, and just like that, level 5 on both heroes. That is it. GG. Yep. GG. Positioning not in time. No AoE to deal with the archers, even though he had the flank. All of the woodworkers did absolutely nothing to slow down the attack. And that is it. GG. Fallen going to take it 2-1 over Creoria in this series.